So he just got his first collar. He don't know what to do. I'm trying to figure out what's going on. I got them all collars. I'm just putting that one on first because that's the one we're going to work with primarily today. I might name it Bugsy. <laughs> I might be Bugsy. Bugsy, Bugsy, Bugsy. Exactly. Bugsy, Bugsy. Bugsy. Uh -huh. You look like an ugly mug. <laughs> <laughs> You guys are foodies. Tifa here with Fitbully TV people. Tron, cut it out. Now, we're gonna walk you through crate training. We've done plenty of videos on crate training. Unfortunately, people still don't agree, don't believe, and don't see the need. Let me tell you this. That dog needs a crate like you need a home. Look at this here. PPPP -P 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 and clarity. Some people believe that you need to make sure a dog's in a smaller crate because it will prevent them from using the bathroom. Is that true? Yeah, I believe so. So the dog can go in one area and then move around in it. In this one, they don't want to pee on themselves. If it's already on the ground and they step in it, they're not going to care, but they're going to be clean if they can. So, so Huh? Th there you go. So for one, we got to clean this up. For two, we're going to walk you through the importance of just crate training and getting the dogs on a leash. These dogs don't even have names yet, people. I've told you before that these Frenchies are available. We saw something procur. And let me tell you guys about the power of being truth. Just telling the truth. Did you know that there's a community of people that will su like be supportive of a dog with epilepsy? So let's say you have a dog that has seizures. If someone knows that, they'll turn around and say, man, I'll, I'll take care of that dog. I want that responsibility. And let me be very honest in saying this black one the other day had a seizure. Jamal was like, yo, Trav! He was like, oh my God, what is happening? Shaking, peed on herself, and was out of it. It gets scary for an owner to see that. I'm glad it happened under my watch because you don't want those phone calls, if I'm being honest. Like you get that phone call, like, hey, what do I do? The dog just had a seizure, they just bought the dog from you. I'd rather know that that could happen, and boom, now you go, so this dog could have seizures. <laughs> I, I hate to I hate to be the bearer of bad news. We've seen one. We don't know why it happened, but it did happen. And there's no data uh, emphatically about seizures and how they happen, what happens. What we do know is the French Bulldog is a handicap, literally a handicap dog. It is a dog bred for problems with problems, and because it's problematic, believe it or not. They can design, 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 and create more problems. And then tell you, look at this new magical dog we got. It looked like a, a, a zebra. But what about the problems? <laughs> what about the allergies? What about the breathing? What about the quality of life? What about the luxating patellas? What about the tight nares? What about the soft palate? What about the juvenile cataracts? <sighs> so many things. I mean, I could, I could go down the line. We're talking about selling someone a handicapped dog. And then you gotta see, well, how far can the dog walk? <laughs> How healthy is the dog gonna be at eight or nine? What's the life expectancy? The older the dog get, the more problems, unfortunately, uh, tend to procure. Are you talking about that hairless bully? That too. But but definitely these Frenchies, and hopefully not these ones. So these will all be pet home dogs. Again, they are available. You can message me at Fibbly Kennel. We're gonna walk you through it. I'll be there to help support anything that's going on. But today, prey training people, Put the pups and look at this. They started upstairs in the laundry mat, uh, laundry mat, the laundry room. <laughs> they went downstairs to the office, and then finally I said, "These Negroes is going outside." <laughs> and I think at the other house they was in the room with me, and then we started moving in the crate. And now they're crate trained for the most part, and uh, we're gonna talk about putting a zapper on them too. Cause you say, "Hey man, how I get that dog to be quiet?" <laughs> <laughs> Bark collar 101. Bark collar 101. Now stay tuned, take care of your dogs. We'll talk a little bit more about behavior and dealing with the French Bulldog. <laughs> this is a cheap Walmart leash, so it ain't gonna do no cr crackling. But <laughs> step one, people. <laughs> one of the safest places to begin any work with any dog, especially if it's your dog and you care about the dog, is in your backyard. Now, if you don't have a backyard, get to a fenced in area, especially if you have a breed that is motivated by prey or anything else. Do not take no dog out in no field that is a, uh, that'll get going. So, backyard, we closed off. He can't get nowhere. We put the leash on. And we just let it hang out. And we might move around. There you go. Let's go do it. Move around, reward him. He doesn't know that the leash is even there right now. 
He just learned about the collar and its power. And then Stan's gonna pick the leash up and start guiding him. And this one right here, boy, he's a, <laughs> you can tell he's a love bug, look at him. He's like, oh, that feels great, buddy. Keep that coming. And look at him, look at him. Slowly but surely, we'll be able to direct his path. And mind you, they're not always gonna run and run right into, oh, I got a leash. You give him parameters. And it's a slow and steady pace. Remember, patience in this case is key. A lot of people want the dog to come trained. If you don't have a Malinois, a Shepherd, or uh, what's another breed that people that just like does what you say it's gonna do? I mean, Ozzy, but you still even have to show those dogs what they do. Because if not, they're gonna tear up your couch. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? So those are working dogs, and a working dog really needs guidance and instruction. So in this case, the, the French Bulldog, it's a, uh, you know, they're assholes. <laughs> they, they are assholes. They don't do as much damage, but they could do some damage. And they need training like every other dog. He's not really treat driven at this moment in time. They do like food. I gave him about a bag of chicken legs the other day. He knocked them holes out. Let me tell you that right now. So, one of the things Stan said in our phone version was tap, tap, pet. Is that what you said? Yep. Tap, tap. Wait, he's chewing. Give him a tap, tap, and then a tap, tap when he gets to you. See? Cool. Love sometimes. Teaching the dog that the collar when he feels pressure is not a bad thing. Because if he keeps trying to fight away, it's going to be a tap, not a pull. Because if I continue to pull him, he's going to keep fighting. But you tap, tap, let the pressure go, now he wants to come. There you go, people. And the trick to making sure, for one, putting your dog on a leash, you put him on a leash, you never want to chase your dog. Stan's talked about that. He learned a very ugly lesson. If ever you get into playing hide and seek with your dog, I tell you right now, <laughs> that dog is gone, bro. Shout out to my guy Richard DeBerry at La Fudeciana. He said he was chasing a dog for four hours the other day. He chased the dog so long that he called the person who was an hour away, told them to come get that dang dog. They said, well, he said, I'll give your money back. Just come get this dog. And guess what kind of dog it was? A skittish kind of corso. Oh, Jesus. He said, man, them dogs, I'm, I'm convinced they defensive and skittish and they got all. I said, look, I don't like them. I'm good on them, bro. I don't want no parts of it. What we will tell you is that leash training is one of the most important things. Recall is the next thing you start working on because that's probably even more important. That's like a good insurance policy. When you say, hey, buddy, come here, he should come. And if he don't come and go the opposite way, now you've got a problem, especially if you've got a dog like Ego running around. <laughs> so you're watching the progress and progression of the leash being one, the friend to the dog, and it's going to provide some safety. And Let's just be honest, it's the effing law. The law <laughs> says, leash your dog. So don't be so sure that, hey, look, if something happened, what the law says, say, keep a leash on your dog. Really? Cut it out. And it's not even necessarily that your dog's gonna do something. Yes. If somebody else's dog's coming off leash and you don't have control of your dog, your dog can get put in a bad situation. They can run out, get hit by a car, or end up getting ate up by another dog. <laughs> if your dog's on leash, you pick him up real quick. And then, uh -huh. get back, get back. Pow, pow, is up. Man, I'm in this. So stay tuned, people. Take care of your dogs. Comment below if you're interested in learning more. We've got a long process. We're about to go to a field, see how far we can get this little joker going and keep pressing forward. The dog is not a robot, people. It is a process and progress is a part of the process. So you see little things, little things, little things. You say, oh, let's put him up because those are signs of growth. And if he keeps growing, that's where the regimen comes in. Boom, got a little further step, got a little further. So let's see if we can get this dog to walk down the block on a leash with Stan. Let's go. So Stan's now got the dog on the leash, people. He's doing such a good job. Um, the dog is sniffed. We, we, we miss the fire hydrant, but he's sniffing and learning and figuring it out. He's thinking, he's using his brain. <laughs> he's what you call paddling because he's reaching, per se, but he's enjoying life. So there's a lot of rewards going on. He's learning about distance parameters, and he's doing a, when I say this is good, he's doing better than I thought he was going to have been honest. <laughs> and he's killing it. And he's killing it because we have one of the best guys training dogs. So don't overthink it. Look at that. He's gonna have that dog into a hill. Problem with a Frenchie as we just talked about. Gotta have good knees, good ankles, and a good back. Because that joker is low. <laughs> That's why I put the general on my shoulder. I ain't got time for that. <laughs> Take care of your dog. Oh, got distracted. Come on. Yeah, boy. Good job. Right, so one of my other tricks for getting the dog to engage with me is to run away from the dog. Now we told you never chase the dog, but your dog should chase you. So I'm gonna jog down here at this. We're gonna see if the dog follows me. And there he goes. So movement, oh, we're, not, we're moving too. So he's like, 
Who, who am I going to? <laughs> he like this dude got treats. <laughs> it confusing. All right, so but, we, we won't move as quick. Go ahead. Do you again. see? Look, look, look. <laughs> look, look, look. Motion is gonna attract the dog to you. And he gave him a little clap, got his attention back, and when he gets there, he's gonna reward the dog. Show your dog that is a good thing whenever they are with you and they're gonna wanna be with you. So if you develop that bond in that relationship, your dog's not gonna wanna go anywhere else. And then if he does, he looks back and Trevor's moving, so pup is following. And it's, it's a, <laughs> one of the best ways to teach recall, people. And you didn't hear him say, come, anything. Motion. And he led by example. Verbal, right? Huh? Yeah, yeah. nonverbal, right? Yes, sir. Yeah, I mean, and people, it's that simple, man. It's that simple, my friend. Um, it's one of my favorite things to do personally is actually play with the, this like my little kid-like thing. Like, let's play hide and seek type thing. Dog keep finding you, keep coming to you. And then slowly, you surely, you, you know, you start teaching in his name, saying his name before you take off. And then you says, hey, come on, let's go, man, let's go. And I just talk to the dog. Same thing I told you, I'm literally just having a conversation. It ain't rocket science. It's literally time, energy, effort, and love. Those three things, nine out of 10 times, will build you in that dog's relationship uh, above anything else. Anything else you wanna add? Yeah, the first time you do this, don't do it with a lot of distraction. There's nothing else here nothing. besides us. That's so it. the dog has a clear point. This is what I'm supposed to do. And obviously the more he does with the dog, you will raise the distractions, make it a little bit harder. But in the very beginning, make sure the dog is successful. There you go, people, listen. Ask more questions, take care of your dogs, pace yourself. This right here is a journey. Stay tuned, and until next time.